logic We're just drawing attention to the lifestyles which some people lead I was born in Bermondsey, one of the south parts And I was born in Bazara, south side of Iraq We used to play football outside in the park We used to dodge bullets outside in the dark I never prayed, I was told there isn't a god I prayed five times a day, it's like I live in a mosque Me, I'm easy with a pint and some cricket to watch They've sanctioned everything we got, so now it isn't a lot My mum and dad worked hard Always had employment My mum just left and my dad got poisoned I was young but I was told that the government did it From my heart I can say that I love being British I grew with five older brothers and sisters Yeah I had a lot of siblings but some have gone missing Now it's just me and my little sis Britain's got a lot of immigrants They take our jobs every day I swear I'm sick of it My uncle's trying to get to Britain quick I'm trying to find a job Me I'm still illiterate Every two weeks I'm signing on We only had school a little bit I got kicked out of school very early Labelled as an idiot Before my uncle left us he gave me his gun My girl just gave me a son You see it's hot where I live Every day I bake in the sun It's cold where I live So I read every page of the sun And I'm getting mad with what I look so, at and read I mean there is stuff on the internet Indeed there's a minute that can be brought up on the internet Between uh, a, a meeting between Pollitt and Stalin Discussing the British route to socialism And that is certainly online And I would be surprised if that was not the case well, our position on the subject is that we have no evidence to suggest that it had the approval of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union and, and of Stalin. But on the worst possible assumption that it had the approval, our basic position in the British Road to Socialism is it's a wrong program, it's not a program to revolution, it's a program of subjugation of the communist movement to social democracy. That's more important to me whether it had the approval of, of Stalin or St. Paul or Jesus Christ, it doesn't really matter to me. The program as such is wrong, and we have to move, move away from it because that program has brought a lot of misfortune to the communist movement in Britain. At the time when the Communist Party of Great Britain did not have that line, although it was a small party, it was a very significant party. It had a party with a lot of influence among the working class, among the industrial working class. It could deliver the working class. On, 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 on various occasions, and that program has not been benefited. You're quite right that left sectarianism can also uh, harm, but you have to actually show who these left, left sectarians are and what harm they're causing. Because left sectarian doesn't mean anything, doesn't mean anarchism, doesn't mean Trotskyism, doesn't mean anti-revisionism, because l l this ultra-leftism uh, is, not, is not a term that defines any, anybody. So you've got to be a bit more specific on that. Well, I mean, having said that, do you accept that the line adopted by the common term 1929 to 34 of class against class was an entirely correct position? I do. I do. You do. I do. And you don't believe that undermined the building of the popular front against no. fascism? The building of the popular front was, was sabotaged by social democracy, which wherever you look, and the most important place where it was undermined was Germany, where even after the Hitlerites came to power, the German Social Democrats wanted to work as a loyal opposition to Hitler. So the, 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 the front was undermined, not because of the communists, it was undermined by German, German Social Democracy. It was exactly the same in, in Britain, where the Labour Party did not actually want to even appear on a platform with, with the communists, where the Labour Party would hound out even harmless committees like those committees which was formed to help the Spanish, uh, the Republicans in the Spanish Civil War, which will have nothing to do because the communists were involved in it. It's the sectarianism of social democracy that prevents a front of that kind being, being, being formed in, in every single country. So, so was the commentary wrong in changing his line? Yeah. No, not at all. But once the Hitlerites had come to power, it, a different line had to be... You know, you yourself said, uh, or somebody said material. that the basis for revisionism are the material conditions that exist under the conditions of, of, of capitalism. The basis for the Covington line is not that something comes into the head of Stalin or something comes into the head of Dimitrov. It is exactly the world situation in which it's taking place. When the Second World, Bro world broke out, the, the, the position of the Covington was it was an 
in inter-imperialist war. It was not an anti-fascist war. You know that led to a split within the Communist Party of Great Britain with Rajni Pamdath and some comrades on one side and Harry Pollitt on the other. And it wasn't until the Soviet Union was attacked in June 1941 that the question was resolved and it genuinely did become a war against fascism. And the leadership of the Communist Party of Great Britain was united, united again and Harry Pollitt returned to being, being, being the General Secretary. So these are the, the, the conditions that changed and I don't think that either Harry Pollitt or Rajni Pamdath ever questioned the change of line of the of of of, of the of the common time, even later in in, in in the 60s, by which time they should have had the chance to to to, to, to adjust their views to what whatever Khrushchev might have, might have wanted. So there were material conditions at a time when the when the social democrats in Germany were waging war against the revolutionaries, were waging war against the communists. The question of United Front could not happen. When, when, when the brown swearing governments were actually shooting down workers in Germany, there could have been no United Front, 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 with, front with them. But when there was a position of help, achieving that, I cannot give you the actual reason. You can read actually Rajni Pamdath's book. Uh, 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 it, it, it's called... Um, no, sir. Fa 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 fascism and... Uh, Social Revolution. Yeah, you can you can read all the details about um, all these matters in in in, in Palm, Palm Dutt's book, but there's plenty plenty of historical evidence to do that. The only people, and I, I don't really include you in that, so please don't don't regard that as pointed. The only people who actually question that are 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 are, 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 are the But then, as Isaac Deutscher, who is a biographer both of Stalin and of Trotsky, and although it's an oxymoron. And only one honest Trotskyist. You know, there's no such thing as honest Trotskyist. But he was a third <laughs> honest Trotskyist. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I mean, uh, you know, he he, he said. Must be the he, 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 he said he said he said Trotsky's line was determined by Stalin. Whatever Stalin said, Trotsky was bound to oppose it. Now that's really not a way of doing a political political analysis. So Trotsky would be in favor of a united front when the united front could, uh, could, could not be formed. He would be against it when it, it, it could be formed and when there were material conditions of forming it. Whether it actually was formed, whether it materialized or not, you had a duty to try. Like the Soviet Union gave a perfectly good example, even during those years, of creating an international united front against fascism, try to get Britain, try to get France, to fight against against the Hitler. Oh, no, now you know that, and it didn't succeed. But just because it didn't succeed, it didn't mean the policy was wrong. And when it didn't succeed, the Soviet Union turned the tables. And when it signed the non-aggression pact with Germany, again we are suddenly told Stalin had collaborated with, with, with Hitler, and even some honorable figures in the international yeah, communist sure. movement are saying it. Like Fidel Castro says that the war was hastened by the fact that Hitler Stalin pact was signed. Well, we have to just beg to differ. Just because Fidel Castro is the, is the head of the Cuban Revolution does not mean that he can get away with any outrageous statement. You are also quite right to express worries about China. You will be no friend of China if you did not express your worries about uh, the major introduction of capitalist and market forces in China. We are friends of China. We raise this question. This question has to be raised. You can't say market socialism is no good in the case of Soviet Union, but it's very good in the case of China. Market socialism is not socialism. It's market. And if it carries on being that, it will overwhelm social, socialism. So, but when, the, when in Lenin's days they reverted to the market, they said, it is a retreat. It's a concession to capitalism, but we will come one day to attack capitalism. But that's not what market socialists do. They say market is good, market is forever. And we express our concerns on that. We are not frightened of anybody. We are comrades. We are not... We don't earn our living by handouts that are given to us either by the old Soviet Union or by China or anybody else. We will speak our minds because we are Marxist Leninists and we are fearless. We say what needs to be said. But we say it in a comradely way. We say it in a way which does not act uh, to, 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 to sabotage um, Soviet or state, socialist state power anywhere in the world. Dimitri. Saying that I have disagreed with Jim again about the Britain's work of socialism. I don't think we have to rely on social democracy. We had this in every single European country, social democracy let us down all over again. 
And back to Britain, the old CBGP of 20s, 30s, it was much stronger. It had MPs, it had links to the working class. After the 1950, it disappeared. Why? Because it just confused the workers. It just got another line, you know. And give me an example, I'm Greek, right, and back in Greece, the Communist Party of Greece, since started attacking the Greek social democracy, is getting stronger and stronger. Mm. Because the, the working class had enough of the social democratic countries, you know. Back in Greece, we had social democrats ruling the country. They promised a lot. They didn't do it. They got us into Europe. They got us into the EU and now into the IMF as well, you know. So how, for how long we have to wait for these social democratic parties to save the working class? Obviously, it's not working. Well, We've got serious examples, you know. As communists, we have to fight for communism and socialism, not for illusion dreams about one day the <coughs> Labour Party can be left or not left or red dead or not blue red or whatever, you know. That's nonsense, you know. We've got the history. We'll learn from the state. That's it. We'll have to move on. Yeah, yeah. Right. And we've got examples, you know, that shows that the old CBGB of 20s, 30s, it was stronger than today's, you know, communist movement in Britain, right. which also disappeared, you know. Uh, and I would actually add to that, yeah. that if you actually go around and talk to workers about the Labour Party, they'll say, oh, these politicians always say they're awful. And in fact, for somebody totally uninitiated who doesn't know about politics, uh, who believes all the propaganda that comes, well, you know, it's really the immigrants taking our jobs, they're the problem, you know, uh, then what you're really doing by not putting forward communist politics and explaining what's really happening is letting those people go to the British National Party in the belief that the British National Party at least is going to actually do something by right. get rid of the immigrants. You know, you are at... Giving us by, 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 situation, you know. yeah, by, by supporting, yeah, but... Yeah. By supporting, uh, by supporting social democracy, you're seeing it all the time. Because they know who works. But the BNP is <laughs> just to add the voice. The BNP is in Scotland as well. I mean, I know it's not strong in Scotland, but still, I mean, they got, yeah, they got still quite all the votes. Thanks. I just leave you with, 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 with one thought at this juncture, not, not to putting an end to the debate. Whatever you might have thought of the British Labour Party, in the earlier period, how can anybody in the communist movement actually even think of supporting social democracy? Yeah. It's waging murderous imperialist wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. Yeah. It's supporting the, the Zionist murderous regime in, 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 in Israel. It supports such enlightened representatives of democracy as the, as the Saudi monarchy and the Gulf state left. Sure. It, it's on the side of the Egyptian regime, which actually does not even allow any ele elections to, to, to be held properly. And it attacks working people, people at home. It's not on the side of the working people at home, and it attacks oppressed people abroad. How can anybody even think of having anything to do with it while claiming, claiming to be a communist? Forget about the past. Let us say that communists have done all the horrendous things in the past, and social democrats were there for a united front. How can you have a united front with imperialist hyenas who are waging war against oppressed people and attacking working people in this, this country? It's become a shubal that we will join the Labour Party, we will do that. And then all it comes down to is Ed Miliband is fantastic because he said that he'll raise the minimum wage to £7.50. Oh, well, is socialism then one pound fifty an hour? Well, if that is it, then uh, it's not my type of socialism, it's somebody else's socialism. Yes, come here. I'm a huge admirer of Joseph Stalin. And the I know you are. The achievements of the Soviet Union under the Stalin leadership were absolutely magnificent. And I have no dispute with anyone who says that from the time of Khrushchev, revisionism took hold of the international communist movement. But we cannot ignore the character of the country in which we live and its traditions. The simple fact of the matter is that the struggle for parliamentary democracy in this country was a vital key ingredient of winning most of the social reforms that the working class have got to do. Social democracy, yes, absolutely it is the agent of capitalism. Yes, its principal purpose in terms of its ideology is to be an agent of capitalism. But the dialectic process operates within the Labour movement and the Labour Party. Not everybody in the Labour Party is as right-wing, thank God, as Tony Blair. Far from it. And it has been in times of struggle 
that the Labour Party has delivered marginally most for the working class. 1945-51, whatever the limitations and they were considerable, the delivery of the welfare state, I lived through the 1940s and I was born in the 1930s. My father never worked. We lived in the most horrendous housing conditions. We could not make ends meet. We couldn't pay to go to a doctor. Are you telling me that the kind of reforms that we have won with a free health service and better education and marginally better housing are not important gains that we, we need to prize and build on? And are you really telling me that in the present situation where the dismantling of the welfare state is the principal objective of capitalism, it's not something we've got to get the widest unity around to fight today. And within the Labour Party and the Labour movement generally, there are many people who are on our side. I mean, I'm <laughs> bemused because it seems to me that despite the fact you say you're against ultra-leftism, there is an element of ultra-leftism in the line that's being advanced here. <coughs> With respect, neither I nor my comrades are telling you any such thing that these reforms were not important. But well, we simply happen to suggest to you that these reforms were not the product of the, of the parliamentary system. Just, just two seconds. These reforms were the product of a mixture of two things. The ferment in the working class movement follow, following the Second World War. And secondly, I suggest to you the victories of the Red Army in Eastern and Central I know, Europe. I know. In Eastern and Central Europe. I've no dispute with that. And, 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 and it, it's, the, the, it's the been the job the of every capitalist party since the Keynesian cons consensus came to an end to dismantle those reforms. Including the Labour Party. And, and, and that includes all the governments that have been formed in this country, Labour Party and Conservative Party. If, they, if, the, if the education service, if the health service, is being gutted through stealthy privatization, through bringing the market into, in, into these areas. It's not just the, the job of the conservatives, it's also the job of labor. They do it in the name of reform. There's reform and reform, and what they're really doing is, is backwards. How can you, when, when the workers in this country were fighting against the trade union laws, anti-trade union laws rather, brought in by the Tories, Neil Kinnock, as the leader of the Labour Party said, we do not want you to go on strike to get rid of these laws. We don't want you to bring down the Thatcher government. When Labour comes to power, it will repeal those laws. Labour has been in power for 13 years. Those laws are still there. There's not a single party that's going to take Are we, are we really become so backward in England and Scotland and in Wales and in Cornwall that our <laughs> forefathers over 100 years ago could, could become tall puddle marchers, mar martyrs, and actually could put an end to anti-trade union laws, and we now meekly accept them in the name of what? In the name of the traditions of the labor movement. What are these traditions of the labor movement? This labor movement. But who, who is saying we should meekly accept these? Nobody's saying that. I mean, that, that really is abusing the position that people disagree with you. Ten million I'm people abusing, in this country still vote anybody. Labor. I'm Nobody not. votes communist. Actually, nobody would vote communist. Nobody would come vote communist unless the communists, unless the communists begin to mobilize people as communists. They're not going to vote for you. If I have, if I'm the owner of Sainsbury, and just someone second, and I'm constantly saying Tesco is the real shop where you should go, I'll go out of business. And if the communists are saying Labour Party is the party of the working class, they have given themselves a certificate of self-liquidation. Right. Communist yeah, Party of Britain, Marxist Leninism, doesn't even contest elections. No, don't, no. Even, don't even no, contest the public opinion. No, this is the same. It mean, doesn't contest elections. In the constituencies where already the, the labor has been debating society. society. The debating society. That's what I'm saying, the CVP. They're not in the class struggle. Stands in the class struggle. It's Parliament the end of the class struggle. I don't think Stalin would have refused to this. No, 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 no. We mustn't allow the meeting to degenerate into a shouting match. The basic thing is, the Communist Party of Great Britain, Marxist Leninist, is a five-year-old party. It does not claim to be, nor is it the mover and shaper in the working class movement. Right? We are trying to build something and we are saying to people, join us if you have the stamina to carry on for 15-20 years and we'll be something. Nothing worthwhile is built in a single day. 
the Bolsheviks spent 17 years trying to build, build, build their party and everybody had discounted them as lunatics, sectarians. The German Social Democrats regarded the Bolsheviks as, as two-headed monsters. They only supported the opportunist elements in the Bolshevik party and you know what the historical result was. And I have no doubt that the Communist Party of Great Britain, Marxist Leninist, carries on as it has started and actually stays true to its principles and avoids falling into the trap that you have quite rightly outlined of either right revisionism or left sectarianism, it will make a success. But this, our opponents will never make a success because they tied their fortune to the fortunes of social democracy, which means they've hitched themselves to the chariot wheel of imperialism and they will never make a success. Can I come back to this fellow Lenin? He had quite a lot of interesting things to say. When the Communist Party of Britain was formed, as you know, in 1920, they were fiercely anti-parliamentarian and fiercely anti the Labour Party. And not only did Lenin say that they should engage in parliamentary politics, but they should also seek to affiliate to the Labour Party, which they did consistently throughout the good times that you're talking about in the 1920s and 30s, right up until 1945. So, I mean, you're not following Lenin's line. The, 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 the unfortunate thing is that, that Lenin, Lenin's advice was not only being listened to by the Communists, it was also being listened to by the bourgeoisie and the Labour Party. The Labour Party acted on it in, in, in far greater intent than did the Communi Communist Party. The Labour Party, when Communists were advised to affiliate to the Labour Party, people only talk of affiliation, they don't talk of the conditions subject to which that affiliation was to be. They were to be able to go into the Labour Party and criticise the rotten leadership of the Labour Party and saying, you are social patriots, you are social traitors. Well, the Labour Party never gave them the opportunity to come and say, say that. Labour Party does not accept the affiliation of the, of, the, of the Communist Party. After trying to marry somebody for 69 years, is it not time that you gave up the attempt? <laughs> <laughs> no affairs for these parents nowadays. <laughs> so it's not going to help, comrade. Uh, we've we've writ written on the subject. We've actually detailed the applications made on various occasions by, 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 by the Communist Party to join, join, join uh, the Labour Party. But Labour Party, very soon after Lenin's speech, stopped being the party that it was. It was not welcoming before well, that. The early, the early British Marxists certainly didn't think much of the Labour Party that you're talking about. Some, that time. some did. So, social, social, Socialist Federation did. The um, Galahar and Company did not. And there were a lot of differences, but they united to form a communist party and they were the united decision to do certain things. Those decisions could not be carried out because the people you wanted to marry wanted to have nothing to do with you. It's more than that. Of course, I think it's a wrong analogy. They want to marry them. They want to be popular. Can I say something? The, the, the point of that whole policy of Lenin saying go and engage with the Labour Party was to go and expose it. He always characterised it as a bourgeois Labour Party, mm. as politically a party of the bourgeoisie. He said, go and engage it, give it the support, or rope gives yeah, a hanging man. Right, yeah. you know? and, and therefore, that was a Labour Party that had never been in power, that had never been tested, that hadn't come in yeah. and bombed and invaded you know, Iraq the first time or the second time. That hadn't did portrayed the working class at home and acted in the interest of imperialism abroad. That hadn't showed its two true colours, so workers had genuine faith in it. The record of a Labour Party now speaks volumes for itself. It's not the yeah. same position, and you can't simply quote Lenin's line in the manner of quoting the Bible and said Lenin said support the Labour Party. It's again a question of material conditions. The way you're forming your argument, patchwork, hit, put hither and thither to justify, it seems to me, to justify read, support of the Labour read, Party. Read John McLean, read William Gallagher's. <coughs> Statements of that period that you're talking about. Not alive and, now and there, there, if he was alive there, now, there, I'm sure he would have said support the Labour Party. Their <laughs> hatred of, so, of the Labour Party at that time knew no bounds. When John McLean contested elections, the only thing that he wanted to do was to put the Labour Party in third position. He didn't care if the Tories won. Are you saying that we should support the Labour Party now? I'm saying that the British Are you saying? I'm saying that the British route to socialism is the best possible. Right now, people right now, as we presently the at this time. I mean, what you're basically saying is contract out the struggle. Let's have a debate now. Build the Communist Party. 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 Build the Communist
uh, where I was asked to present on the subject of the, of the British Road to Socialism. Um, and I took a whole series of quotations from Lenin's State and Revolution and some whole series of quotations from the British Road to Socialism. I didn't put a name on either of them and I distributed them. And people were left to draw their own conclusions. And they certainly uh, saw a massive difference between Lenin's State and Revolution and the British Road to Socialism. Oh, of course there is. <laughs> um, so, you know, you can't get away from the fact that bourgeois democracy is bourgeois democracy. You know, you can have millions of people on the streets protesting against the war against Iraq, which there were. Does anybody take a blind bit of notice? They don't. Um, so, what is this democracy? It's not there. The, to the extent that any concessions have been made to, to the British working class, uh, maybe uh, the concessions have been channeled through Labour, Labour um, channels, but they've come from the bourgeoisie and they've only come to the extent they're frightened of us. With the collapse of the Soviet Union, they're not frightened anymore, so they take everything away. You know? Um, and they're not frightened of us because we've, uh, we've given up fighting for communism. The, you know, most people in the street haven't just learned about communism at school where they're told it's the same as fascism. The communists aren't telling them about communism. They're not telling them the basic things that they need to know in and order to support the, the Labour Party. Party. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. All the matters is, all I, I, the is, is participating I, 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 in an election. Um, I, I, and uh, actually, we have participated in elections. Well, I have anyway, because um, I've been a candidate for the Socialist Labour Party uh, before the Socialist Labour Party uh, threw me out. But, <laughs> Uh, but and I know that once you get involved in bourgeois elections, even though you're, you know as a Marxist you're there in order to have a platform, in order to put forward uh, communist ideas to people, that's why you're there, and you also ought to know that those ideas are new and novel and difficult and opposed uh, by all the bourgeois media, and therefore to the extent you're putting them forward successfully, you must expect in the short term that you won't get a lot of votes. And yet the whole logic of participating in bourgeois elections, you're sitting there wanting to know how many votes you've got, how many, uh, and the, the, you know, if you're any good, you'll get votes, you see. And, and, and it actually pulls you in uh, to a feeling, uh, to forgetting why you're there. Now, I think communists have an obligation, if they can possibly do it, to, to participate in any electoral process, any chance to speak to the masses, any chance to let the masses speak to you, which I personally find the most valuable part of, um, of, of participating in elections. Uh, of course you take it, but don't get sidetracked into thinking what's really important is to become a representative of bourgeois democracy. Well, she's saying you can't win in elections. What do you say to workers when the worker says to you, who do I vote for on this occasion? Who do you say when the worker says to you, the SNP might be putting forward a referendum on independence? What do you say to the worker? Should he support it or she support it or should he or she oppose it? In, what concrete answers do you give to concrete questions? Yeah, in, in, in the last election, uh, we, our party took the line that you can vote for anybody that's against the war. Um, and the Tories all get in. And the well, Tories they're they're not against the war. Oh, like, what's, <laughs> the, the, <laughs> what's the difference between the Tories and the the same party. Blue is red. You might like Ryan's Tory party and get a lift with the Tory party and get socialism with the Tory party. Come and talk to my neighbours. What are you talking about? I'm not the wrong thing. And unfortunately, when 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 somebody is so deeply committed to, 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 to supporting social democracy, there's, there's not a point really having an argument, there's no argument that I could possibly uh, put forward to convince his comrade that should be different. He's politically astute, he's politically wise, he's erudite, he knows the history of the communist mo movement, he knows the history of social democracy, but in the end he says, no, these are the traditional British Labour movement, <laughs> we've always voted the Labour Party, yeah. Labour Party is an imperialist it's party, nice. but it is our party, it's a bit like Reagan saying, yes, so-and-so is the son of a bitch, he's son of our bitch. You're saying the Labour Party is the Labour Party is the Labour Party is a son of a bitch, but it's the son of our bitch. Well, if you want to carry on, that's fine, but that's not, you know, oh, okay, Kevin, see you. But it's not it's not something that that we well, prefer to say. So, yes, comrades. No, comrades. We, uh, no, we we're, we're going to we're going to move on and, and take some some other contributions.